Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. Uh, I'd like to discuss how to sing any song. And this is really important because uh, what you're gonna find is you think you're hearing certain vowel sounds when in fact you're actually not when you hear a really great singer. Uh, here's what I mean by this. Um, a lot of times we think of singing like we speak. SLS, singing like we speak, when in fact we really don't sing like we speak, we sing like we sing, like we should sing well. And here's what I mean by that. If I were to sing a line in a song, and let's say the line was, you know, um, I'm sailing away, set an open course for the virgin sea. It's an old stick song, right? What you're gonna learn is, now let me sing it like the way Dennis DeYoung would have sung the song. I'm sailing away, set an open course for the virgin sea. Right? He really pushes this sound and mask into the front of the face. He's a phenomenal singer, by the way, and still out there doing it today, killing it, which is awesome. But I bring this up because there are what are called vowel transitions. Now, what I like to do is I like to get my students to start off working up their songs with vowels only first. But how do we work up songs with vowel only first if those vowels, and we don't understand the, their relationship to each other, and we're just going through and singing a song, we can over sing those vowels, okay? So let's say if I, let me uh, speak that line to you. I'm sailing away, set an open course for the virgin sea. Now I wouldn't go, I'm sailing away, set an open course for the virgin sea. Right, maybe in theater we might want to do that because we're trying to accentuate the lyrics and we want the last person in the, row, uh, in the last row to understand what we're saying. But for the most part, we want to break this stuff down a vowel at a time and we want to actually eliminate consonants altogether. So what I encourage my students to do is to take a song that they love, whatever that song is, eliminate the consonants altogether. So, and then, and then we're going to talk about vowels in a second. So, okay. Now there are what I call vowel substitutions. Now these vowel substitutions vary, and they're not constant. In fact, I just saw one vocal coach put out something here recently. Um, it's uh, you know how how to sing any song. Uh, I'd like to make some adjust adjustments to this because there's some incorrect information in that. And if she's listening, hopefully she'll benefit from this because um, this is 30 years of experience of doing this for a really long time. And those vowel substitutions are as follows. In the English language, we have somewhere between 12 and 16 different vowels. In bel canto, or in Latin, or in Italian, there are five. A, E, I, O, U. Now, I've studied bel canto most all of my life, and I like first to use that as a premise by which all other vowel sounds happen. However, it falls very short of um, tradi um, the traditional vowels of bel canto fall very short of contemporary vowels that we use in the English language. So if I go, this is called, I'm gonna show you something called vocal tract shaping where we actually shape the vowels themselves to morph easily from one vowel to the next. So we wanna take the path of least resistance or from one vowel into the next vowel so that when those vowels join or are married together to each other, we can actually have a smooth transition keeping the maximum space in the, in the back of the throat, the least amount of jaw movement, the least amount of tongue movement, and the least amount of over-exaggeration of the vowel. Now the higher up we go, and this is where this other um, coach has given out some information. Good information, by the way. There's some good in info there for sure, absolutely. It sounded like she is, um, yeah, we, we somehow we crossed paths on, on, with the same information. But within this, the higher up we go, the smaller those vowel sounds need to happen. So if I were to go this, do this really high, instead of when I just went, no, ooh, oh, ah, e, e. If I were to go really at la, did you notice that there was almost no change in the vowels themselves? They were super subtle. So the higher up we go up this food chain of these vowels, 
the more compressed or the smaller spaces that we get within the vowel structures themselves. And we take the path of least resistance from one vowel to another. What do I mean by that? Well, this is far more than just a simple quick tutorial here, but there's something called the family of vowels and the vowels, how they relate to one another when we sing. So as um, we go up, we convert these vowels. So if we were to sing uh, I, for example, and this is where this uh, other coach is correct, I converts to ah, but not in every case. So if I go, I don't go I, it's just kind of weird, right? And by the way, we talk about diphthongs and some other stuff. You don't necessarily go I and close the vowel. Then you go I. At the very end, you can add just a little bit of the E and I or ah, the ah vowel and IE, right? Now, the higher up we go, if I say like, then all of a sudden, it takes on the persona, persona more of an a or a, a in the sound. So these vowels shift, and I know this sounds complicated, and it is a little bit, but these vowels shift and they change the higher up we go in the food chain, depending on what we're singing and the intensity of what we're singing, and also the vowels themselves. So I would never sing a pure E. Now let me demonstrate this in a different kind of way. We talk about a vowel holding its shape, right? The shape of the vowel, and then having a quick diphthong at the end, and then curbing into the speaking level sound of the vowel. But actually there's vowels as we go up top, we don't ever sing in a pure res uh, uh, the purity of the vowel itself. E is a good example. So I don't go e I go A quickly, like A-Y-E. A and I can gently roll into the A-E, into that vowel, and then all of a sudden I'm making you think I sang E the whole time, but I use A as the portal or the tunnel, the portal or the, um, the bridge to get to that. This is true for OO also. If I'm on the bottom and I say OOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO
the higher up I go, the smaller the space is. Now, the, the space is big in the throat in that we want to create the most space as possible, but we actually want to compress the vowels and make them smaller the higher up we go. Hear me doing it smaller? chain to go, the smaller I make the space. Now, the higher up I go from here, the more I bring mask into the sound and I push the sound into the front. So I'm not carrying so much girth or mass in the throat up with me and I compress the sounds and make them smaller. When you combine this with the songs that you're singing, you're going to notice that all of a sudden you're going to have all this freedom in the throat that you never knew you had, knew you had, and then gently, little by little, you start to reintroduce the consonant sounds as you can to keep that throat open. Now there's something called glottal stops, which are any time that the glottis closes down and air stops the flow. So um, ba, things that close down, maybe you can substitute those consonants with different vowel, uh, different consonants. Like instead of going, maybe, 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 you can use small things like a V. Maybe, 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 until you can force the throat to stay open because in the back, the epiglottis is it's closing across the, the trachea and, and, and allowing air to come up. And this, in, in, in the case of diphthongs that we talked about a minute ago, um, it's trying to differentiate airflow coming out of the mouth or out of the nose and the back of the throat's going, hey, can you make up your mind here? Do you want air to come out of the mouth or do you want to come out of the nose or combination thereof? Now I'm going to cover this again. Uh, that's actually you know, a whole other subject that has to do with called glottal stops. We'll get to that um, in another subject. I cover all this in my singing course, guys. If you like what you heard, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, please come check out my singers forums. Gosh, we have almost 10,000 people in there now. It's just insane and it's growing like a weed. So you can get a ton of this amazing information. You can click here and check that out. I have a singing course out called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, and I go through step by step how you can build muscle memory for all of this stuff to put you guys on the fast track for awesome singing. Okay? Thank you for joining me. Until next time, Ken Temple Vocal Academy. Peace. Yeah.